Hi everyone, Paul of the Land here from Surf Online Safe. Uh, this is my first video in uh, my series of mini vids called the Modern Playground. So hopefully uh, you enjoy these. It's just trying to get as much information as I can out there in regards to what I'm seeing around the place in, in Australia. Now, one one little website I want to speak to you about, which has continued to grow quite significantly over the last few years, especially where children are using, is the website called Omegle. Now, I've done a bit about this in my media and, and in my blogs online, but I, I just need to keep speaking to you about this one because it's something I'm continuing to see massive risk. Now, Omegle is a very simple website. Uh, it's been run out of the US uh, since 2009. For its first year, it was just a, a standard uh, messaging chat system. But after the first year, they, they flicked to video chat as well. So uh, I, I've been trying to close this one down for a while now. It's, it is one of the worst I've seen. Even when I was working as a police officer at Tech Crime, there was a, a number of investigations we were doing on this website where uh, sadly there's a, a lot of people uh, grooming kids. Now, once you enter the Amigo website, you're hit with a, a series of terms and conditions, which of course all our kids will walk straight past and won't even consider reading. And, and you just click on video chat. Now, at the top of the screen, you can see um, talk to strangers. Now, I haven't added that in, that's not an edit. That's how they promote the site, talk to strangers. Now, as parents, what have you been saying to our children for centuries now? Don't talk to strangers. So, so this is where this site in particular continues to really frustrate me because it just pushes the boundaries and, and, and fails to really come up to speed with the risk of the online world. So uh, it's owned by Leif K. Brooks. Now, Leif created this site when he was 18 years of age and uh, he's been uh, the boss and, and running the site since then. So uh, yeah, like I said, I've been trying to close it down for a while, but uh, it's pretty hard to do considering uh, it's, it's run out of the US. So once you click on uh, video chat, the main chat screen will open up. You've got two camera views, um, yours at the base and a random at the top. And on the right hand side there, you can see uh, the video, or sorry, the chat area. Now, once you've entered the site, you can, your camera will come on and start streaming live video view. So someone else randomly logged in at that particular time, their camera will come on also and start streaming live video of them. So now you are chatting with a random. Now, if you don't like the person who pops up on the screen, uh, you can just press escape, next camera comes up. Escape, next camera comes up. So the session, uh, you see on the screen now has got uh, 19,000 people in it. This one's from 2013. So we push now forward to 2021 and most sessions in Omegle now have anywhere between 45 to 55,000 people in them. So yeah, your kid can be flicking through 55,000 cams and they are going to be exposed to some pretty risky content. Now, Yes, there are people on Omegle who are using the site just to chat, um, interact with peers all around the world. And, and again, I, I, like many of our chat services, I do not have an issue with that whatsoever because that's a great way to communicate. But the problem we have here is that's not what you're getting. That's not what you're seeing and that's not all what you're going to be uh, encountering. In fact, the vast majority of videos you will see will be of adult males who will be interacting in a sexual way. So I won't go into showing that graphic detail here. That can be seen in, in some of my other videos and also in hopefully a documentary that I'll be releasing over the next couple of months. So when we were doing investigations on this site in, in 2013, and this is why I really need to speak to you about it, is because we in those in those days we'd only see out of the, the number of cams we were, we were flicking through as police officers, you'd have a kid maybe appear on the screen in one in every 90 cameras. So little kids or young, young teens weren't using the site. But currently, we're seeing a child using the network in one in every 27 cameras. Now, I'm not saying a kid, oh, is that kid 16, 17, whatever. No, these are kids who are 10, 11, 12 years of age. And when I'm chatting with these kids and, and talking to them, asking them questions, 
uh, why are they using this site? They'll go, oh, my brother told me about it, or, or I just Googled free video chat and, and it came up. So, or I, or I just stumbled across it on, online. And, and, and 27% of our children under the age of 15 will stumble across pornography online without even looking for it. So that, that openness of this site in particular is, is extremely risky. Now, and, and one of the most frustrating things about Omegle is, is how they appear to protect users and they appear to give information in regards to how they monitor their network. But I just, I just don't find that believable. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. Now, as I said, when you enter the site, you're, you're in, you encounter the terms and conditions. Now, that is very openly written. And, and one in, little section in particular uh, I allude you to is the fact that it says, Users, you use Omegle at your own peril. Okay, so they're almost setting you up to fail. Now, yes, Mr. Brooks says he does have moderation and they do monitor video. Well, okay, when you've got 55,000 people on the site at any particular time streaming uh, tens of thousands uh, of videos um, in a year, th there is no way in the world they're, they're going to be able to truly monitor their network because of the volume. So, yeah, they may look at random videos here and there and act on that, but uh, again, the, the openness and... The, the, the massive content of nudity and sexual interaction on the site is massive. So your child can be flicking on a cam, all of a sudden they'll be exposed to some of the most greatest risk. More importantly, they're chatting with these people. So this is where we need to really have those conversations. Now, Meagle can be blocked through our, our modem. Uh, there's a number of apps I do recommend which can help block it. But again, we just need to have conversations because our kids are using. Now, this site in particular is one that I continue to struggle with, not, not in the fact of the site itself, but how I talk to kids and how I approach um, the students I speak to. Now, I don't speak to, to students about Omegle under the, the year of, sorry, under the age of year nine. Anywhere above, uh, below that, I, I avoid the site because I don't want them to know about it. But, but this is where it gets difficult for me because weighing up that, should I tell them or should I just hope that they're not using is very difficult because when I ask year nines, I'll say, guys, and I don't ask who's using it because I don't want to embarrass the kids, but I'll ask the question, how many of you are aware of it? And every hand will go up, all right? And when I discuss it, in more depth, the number of kids who are actually using it, it astounds me. And, and I continue to get shocked in this industry, but I don't continue to get shocked if that makes sense because I'll, I'll sit there and go, yeah, that's typical of the internet. But the other half of my brain will be going, oh my God, why, 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 why? So, so this is where it gets frustrating. Our kids are using, and, and as I've already said, it's I'm seeing it now in primary school. So we need to really have these conversations with our kids in regards to the use of such sites and how we're interacting on cams. Now, you can't use Omegle without being exposed to such risk. Now, yes, as I said, you can interact with people. If you want to chat with a with another 12 or 13 year old from, from Uzbekistan, then you can do it to a certain degree. But the problem we have is you've got to flick through all the other cameras to get to that kid or get to that interaction. So this is where it just, it has massive risk. So during my time at Tech Crime, we were working uh, undercover on, on this site and, and we were identifying a number of offenders who were using the site to groom children. Now, they'd then be pushed to other websites to continue that interaction and this is where kids were being exposed to risk. I'm also seeing a number of high school levels, especially, uh, sorry, high school students, especially our young boys. Um, with respect, it's it's a high, um, high risk site for sextortion. Now, boys are interacting with people on the networks, uh, obviously usually young girls because of the anonymity of the site. So they might be chatting with a girl they might think is 14, 15 or 16 years of age from Brazil, uh, as an example, and they'll be interacting, chatting away for a while, and then that conversation could turn sexual. So that boy 
and the girl in the video will get their gear off and start start interacting in a sexual way. Now, what I'm seeing a lot now is those videos are being captured. So you can screen capture, obviously, on Omegle like you can any any chat service. So that boy might be interacting in a sexual way. His face might also be shown on the screen. So that video will be captured. Uh, it'll be shown back to the kid. And then that uh, offender or the scammer will then say, pay me money or I'm going to post this video to your parents. So I'm seeing that a lot. Now, this sounds pretty horrible, but uh, many of our scamming syndicates now are actually using their own children. Now, in the past, on sites like Omegle, <clears throat> you'd be interacting with, uh, with videos or kids. Um, and a lot of our modern juveniles would go, no, nah, no, nah, that's a fake vid, that's a fake vid. So they'd pick that interaction. So as a result of that, our scammers were having to start to get much more technical. They'd be using um, downloaded uh, child porn videos of, or, or downloading just webcam videos that all, they'd ripped off other sites. But again, a lot of the users who were watching those would pick them as non-live. So what a lot of our scamming syndicates are now doing is they're actually putting their own children, 13, 14 or 12 years of age in front of a cam and getting them to sexually interact with users. So when a potential victim says, are you real, um, wave to the camera, that kid will actually be doing it. So they now know they're interacting live. So they won't realize the depth in regards to how far some of our scamming syndicates will go to, to catch out our kids. Why is that such a massive factor? And, and this is why I have to talk to you about Omegle because our scammers are still ripping off adults all over the world. Don't get me wrong. That's still a factor and it still will be a significant factor for a number of years. But many of our scammers have now identified when they're interacting with child victims that those child victims will not report. In fact, my experience working at Tech Crime, those adult males who got out, caught out in sextortion, in fact, a high percentage would report to police. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that means <clears throat> scamming, scamming syndicates would be closed down. Uh, they'd have to rebuild, and that takes a lot of time and energy. Yes, they would get a, a few victims, but they'd be large amounts of money. So many of our scammers have now identified there's a, there's a, a better way to do things, and that is to target kids because kids don't report, especially our teenage boys. So you're gonna get a lot more number of victims, but there's gonna be smaller amounts of money. So one of the victims I dealt with uh, in November of last year, so 2020, he was chatting with a young girl for 14, 15 minutes before the video went sexual, and, and he, he got sextorted in that same method I just told you. Now, this young kid is a boarder at one of my high schools, so he, he has got access to a credit card. Now, it only had a $500 limit on it, but he gave the credit card numbers to the scammer. So he got that 500 bucks ripped off the card, and of course, he's sitting there hoping, hoping parents don't see that. And of course, a couple of days later, mum and dad read the credit card statement and that's when it all really turns bad for this young fella. So for me, this is where our scammers have shifted culture a fair bit. So it's so important we continue to have conversations. There's, as I said, a number of apps that can block Omegle um, and I hopefully we can do that. We can block it through our modem. There's an instruction video on my YouTube channel here that shows you how to do that. So it's just about really just trying to lock down. Uh, in the meantime, I'll try to continue to, to close down the site and to push uh, Leaf Brooks and, and the network to be more responsible in regards to how they're protecting users. But sadly, that, that onus will always push to us as parents and as educators. And, it, and sadly, it also pushes to the kids. And this is why my education to them is so important. It would be easy to hide away from this site and go, well, I hope that they don't visit. I hope that they don't visit. So for me, a, a cyber safety presentation from Surf Online Safe, year nines and above will hit this site. I'll give them an example of a, a, a risk and I'll give them an example of, of a crime I dealt with where a kid was actually sex ordered. So it's important they get these messages because our kids will take risk. Uh, more importantly, um, th they can be sitting at home and, and just stumble across this site. You could be up at the shops and, and and that can be exposed to some pretty high risk. Does that make you a bad parent? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It just shows you how 
how risky things can be and how quickly things can can turn bad. So this is where it's so important to have conversations uh, with your kids in regards to that, especially our teenage boys, because they tend to take a lot more risk on these networks. So please be aware of Meagle. Please have your chat to your kids about it. Try to block it through the networks, uh, through our, our modems and through our apps uh, where we can. And if you need any further information on this site, please let me know. Uh, and I look forward to, to speaking to you all again soon and, and uh, check out my uh, continued videos coming through in regards to the modern playground. Thanks, guys. All the very best.